The 19th Non-Aligned Movement Summit, also known as NEM, kicked off on Monday in Kampala, Uganda, amid global challenges including terrorism and climate change. The five-day-long summit is the largest grouping of states worldwide after the UN, with 120 member states, 18 observer nations and 10 organizations. Uganda's Foreign Minister General Abubakar Jeje Ondongo opened the summit in accordance with the norm and practice of NEM. To share on the summit, Anna Mabia's contribution is the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Netumbo Nandi Ndaitwa. Ma'am, good evening and uh, welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me. To begin with, uh, ma'am, the Namibian state is founded on a long history of international solidarity um, for the struggle of the Namibian people. So what role uh, do, you know, have institutions such as NAM played in the independence of Namibia? Uh, I believe that uh, the listeners and the viewers, they are aware that uh, non-aligned movement is uh, a movement that was established in 1961 and basically to advance the interest of the developing countries and also particularly to support the countries who were uh, fighting for their independence. Uh, as they themselves non-aligned, they were more concentrating on safeguarding their independence, their territorial integrity, as well as their national security. Uh, particularly uh, during the time of uh, colonialism, there was also fear of new colonialism. And uh, as a result, the non-aligned countries, they felt it was necessary for them to come together in order to be a force. And it was in that process that they have become good uh, allies of the liberation movements, including SWAPO. And that is why SWAPO has joined the non-aligned movement as a liberation movement. So therefore, the support that we got from the non-aligned movement, both materially politically and diplomatically has made a significant impact to our struggle that's made it possible for the Namibian people to fight until we gain our independence. Mm -hmm. The non-aligned movement is currently regarded as the principal political platform for advancing the interests of uh, developing countries. What then are the benefits for us as Namibians to be a member of NAM? You see, there is quite uh, a number of benefits that uh, a country like Namibia can get from being a member of the non-aligned. Uh, first and foremost, uh, as much as we know that uh, the international community is guided by the principle of sovereignty and sovereign equality of states. However, the reality of the situation is we are in a very complex uh, world whereby you have countries which are large and small large in terms of their size, in terms of their population, in terms of their security or military strength, and also in terms of their economy. But uh, being a member of uh, an organization like Nana Line, then the, these countries of the developing countries, they can be a force in terms of coordinating among themselves on issues of security, on issues of economy, and even politically, they can make a strong statement. And that's why you noted, when we come to the United Nations, in the General Assembly, where the majority counts, and considering that the majority of member states are from the developing countries or non-aligned, you realize that in the General Assembly, 
you have more progressive resolutions that are passed. And of course, they become a moral responsibility for member states to make reference to, and also for the citizens of the world to make reference to them. So, and even for us during our struggle, we benefit from that. And even today, we continue to have a strong voice in the international community when we are speaking as non aligned than when we are speaking as individual. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, in the principle of South-South cooperation, the non aligned countries are focusing also on economic cooperation. And that is coming really prominent now, particularly during this meeting. There's a lot of discussions on South-South cooperation in order to ensure that the people of the South, they should get benefit from the resources that they are having in their countries. And this is really a great benefit that Namibia cannot let go. Mm -hmm. And hence, we continue to pay attention uh, to the work of the Nana Line and to make our contribution as a member state. Moving on to the ongoing matters of the summit, Madam Ndaitua, uh, there have been calls from Arab nations for the summit to address the ongoing conflict um, taking place in Gaza, with Namibia uh, being amongst those who have obviously condemned uh, the violence in, in, in Gaza. Do you expect the summit to make a declaration on this? Uh, Yes, uh, the summit of Nana Line, it always come out with a declaration. And uh, due to the specific situation we are now experiencing in Gaza, uh, definitely there will be some um, paragraphs in the declaration that will support the people of Palestine and that will call for the end of hostility or to end the military operation of Israel in, uh, in Gaza, and particularly also to create a situation whereby those who are injured, they can get attention. In other words, humanitarian assistance to reach the people of Gaza and those who are internally displaced to be taken care of. Yes, there is a unanimous uh, uh, agreement within the NAM member states for a statement to be made, which is focusing on support of the people of Gaza. The topics, uh, Madam Ndaitu, are on the agenda for the 19th NAM summit. Uh, the 19th NAM summit has uh, a wide range of topics that uh, are to be discussed. Uh, they are topics of political nature, which I have already referred to, and they are topics of uh, economic nature. Uh, for example, because non member states are also members of the United Nations, and currently the UN is in the process of reviewing the progress made under Agenda 2063, which is the Sustainable Development Goal. Now, as uh, NAM members, uh, we are they are also we are reflecting on the progress that is made, and of course, it's not a secret that no much progress has been made in terms of implementing the goals of the Sustainable Development Goal. So therefore, as a non as non member states, uh, we are looking seriously on what should we do on our own, uh, particularly on the issue of trade and investment. How do non member states can trade among themselves and how they can also invest in other countries? Uh, also looking at issues like climate change, desertification, and all that comes with it. Uh, all countries of NAM are recovering from the COVID pandemic. 
And there's a lot of information that has to be shared among member states. Uh, they are also looking at how we can strengthen the UN system or multilateralism. Uh, the issue of the reform of the UN Secretary General of the UN Security Council is also under discussion and how we can also look at other institutions like financial institutions, trade international institutions, in order for the developing countries to benefit from these uh, international programs. Uh, at the end of the meeting, uh, there is uh, expected that a declaration has to be passed and it will uh, contain all those elements that uh, are addressed or identified as being priority for NAM member states in our developmental agenda. The 19th Non-Aligned Movement Summit is being convened under the theme Deepening Cooperation for Global Affluence. Could you perhaps briefly elaborate on the theme and its, me its meaning? Yes, uh, global affluence simply talking about a balanced shared prosperity. Uh, currently, we are talking about the global village. However, it's a fact that uh, as much as we are a global village, when it comes to development, uh, there is uh, the South cannot be compared with the North. And even within the South, you have countries who are really underdeveloped. In other words, you have some countries who are, whose people are living under extreme poverty. And then you have those, the rich countries, whose citizens are living in luxury. And these are the discussion now under this theme as to how we, as the developing countries, will bring about a balanced prosperity in the world economic system. And uh, we can do it as South-South cooperation, of course, with goodwill. It can also be done North-South cooperation or triangle. So however, during this meeting, there is a strong emphasis on the South to work among ourselves so that we make sure that uh, each and every citizen of our countries will be able to see the benefit of our independence, particularly that now the majority of the developed countries are now independent with the exception of the uh, people of Palestine, we are talking about the Western Sahara, and a few uh, um, islands which are still under foreign domination. But by and large, the developed countries have gained political independence. However, we have really to work hard in order to ensure political independence. Hence the theme of this year's summit, so that we see how shared balance, prosperity, can be realized in our countries. Madam Netumbo Nandi Ndaitwa, we thank you for your time this evening and we wish you and the Namibian delegation all the best for the duration of uh, your time in Uganda. Thank you very much. I have to tell you this uh, session we are having currently is a ministerial session and uh, which is ending tomorrow and the summit itself is starting on the 19th. So we are expecting heads of states to arrive in Kampala tomorrow for their two-day session. So in fact, what I'm saying to you, these are proposals that we are going to submit to the heads of state and government, and then is where final decisions will be taken. Thank you very much for invitation, and uh, thank you for your time. And let me greet the Namibians and to send their greetings from the people of Uganda. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much.